Georgina Woodson. You've cut your hair. Oh, it looks lovely. You're a vision. Come on in. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, where's the lovely Ronnie? Oh, don't tell me your husband's standing us up. Not after he sounded so very keen when he RSVP'd. I was hoping he was here, isn't he? <laughs> I'd positively know if he was. Now, let's get that coat off. You are stopping, aren't you? Ronnie will turn up. He had a meeting in Warwick. Then no need to send out the search party. He did say he'd be here. <laughs> <laughs> then he will. Now, Georgina, where do you stand on oysters? Bang them down or heave them up? <laughs> well, they got the Duchess involved, and believe me, no inmate has left that prison since without a soft spot for a hand-raised pork pie! <laughs> well, you can imagine, can't you? <laughs> oh, it's puerile, I know, but bless him. It's Clive's signature saucy anecdote. It shouldn't work, should it? I mean, look at him. What makes him so charismatic? I mean, beyond his you know, magnetic public school charm, his old money politeness, his blistering intellect, and the way he is so deeply, deeply interested in whoever he's talking to, you mean, yeah, I, I can't think. Yeah, but you make Boris Johnson look not positively catwalk. <laughs> All that, I mean, the Dutch, the sweet, sweet guy. This, oh, excuse me, I'm lovely. Clive, Respect. darling. <laughs> Clive, darling, this is Georgina Woodson, the utterly breathtaking wife of Ronnie. <laughs> and the medical practitioner to the parish of Leatherbridge. Oh, how wonderful for you to come. It's George. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. What? A doctor? Yes. Well, no, I was just so hoping that George and Ronnie, you know, would both be boys. Oh, well, Ali, please, no. Not that tired old fantasy. Oh, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> it's so cliché. Oh, come on. Can't a girl have a dream? You know, and I could have been talking about um, the seating arrangements, uh, but I wasn't. You're right. Hello, hi. I'm Alison Finn. Ali. Hello. And this here is my best friend, Angus. Hi. All those jokes about the meat and the runny jelly and the size of the grass. Because the whole thing is, he's a vegetarian! Should, um, call my husband again, really. He must have got held up. Business. Have you any idea how stultifyingly boring that Protestant work ethic is? Oh, I don't know, Ronnie and I like our work, really. Which is why he's still doing it at half eight on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't normally happen. We're lucky, really. would work anyway. And what is it that you do? Oh, uh, trade shows and exhibitions, mostly. <laughs> Show homes, occasionally, when I get the chance to come over all trendy and cutting-edge. <laughs> so you're a designer? Designer, set dresser, prop buyer, caterer. <laughs> yeah, this man can source everything from catalogue printing to leggy blondes oh. in Kylie Styley gold hot pants. Oh, hot pants! <laughs> only to hand tequila shots out in. Well, it sounds interesting. Yeah, he's going to try and tell you that he's bored to death, but he loves it, really. I mean, what's not to like about blondes of the leggy variety packing tequila? <laughs> and he, um, he met Dame Judi Dench last week. Yes, it was Dame Judi and Sir Ian, as it happened. If you're going to name drop, at least do it properly. Well, I am syringe the ears of a famous musical theatre star. Oh, who? Um, Michael Ball. What, Jason Donovan? Oh, uh, John Barrowman. Uh, wasn't he in Birmingham last Christmas? <laughs> Oaths and well, ethics, my lips are sealed. Well, not even if we uh, got you completely bladdered? Uh, no, because if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we like you. <laughs> oh, you'd uh, tell the Clive Morgans in somebody a few minutes. Cloakroom's this way. Is my wife here? Ronnie! <laughs> uh, you do know this evening's not fancy dress. <laughs> Come on, I'll find you something. I'm so sorry. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll um, stick together over dinner then. Yes, I'll drink to that. <laughs> and if they tell us to eat anything that was once alive and is still uncooked, yes, or we're still moving when it was in the kitchen, then we'll politely refuse it together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we're still up for the games. Games? Oh, yeah, I love games. Um, Ruthless at Twister. Mm -hmm. I am rubbish at that game where you have to guess who you are. I'm dressing up. No, the, oh, the, you have to guess who you are. So you've got um, a name pinned to your back or a sticker, and they stick it on your forehead. Mm -hmm. And you can ask lots of questions, but they only give you yes or no answers. And the last time we played that, actually, I was... Um, Calig... Calig... <laughs> oh, hello. I was Caligula. Caligula. Mm. Yeah, that game. Thank you. 
So what about more adult games? You know, spin the bottle, truth or dare? Oh, no. All right, right. Well, at least we know you're up for Twister. Mm, in these <laughs> shoes. <laughs> really? Why haven't you changed? Oh, I don't know. Something to do with the fact that it's just taken me three and a half hours to cover less than 20 miles. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Angus. Or could it be that I haven't been home? I'll get you a drink. Oh, never mind. You... The phone's knackered. I haven't eaten since breakfast. So, excuse me if I haven't slipped into my Hugo Boss tux on the way over here. <laughs> Look, I think we should go. Oh, no, I'm having a great time. Oh, uh, not another word. You're wearing slippers. <laughs> it's, well, it's, well, it's, it's a look. It's... <laughs> well, Rena swore she'd find a use for old Uncle Felix's slippers. <laughs> Evening, Clive. Well, come on, Ronnie, you know the rules. None of that making a beeline for your Mrs. Malarkey. Come on, come with me. You don't mind if I whisk you off? I'll be you? my guest. <laughs> yes, I'm so very glad that the other half finally got you on the guest list. I was beginning to think you were one of those all work and no play chaps. Dreadful. Ding, 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 jackpot. Well, here we are. Vroom, vroom, our very own biker boy. <laughs> Ronnie, allow me to introduce you to Ali. Ronnie Woodson, I'm delighted to meet you. Ali Finn. I've heard a lot about you. Or bad, I hope. That's your husband? It certainly is. Great. Well, let the games begin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine, me. Thank you. Everything all right? You know I have people to do that, right? Yes. Sorry, I'm intruding. No, it's just one doesn't only expect to bump into one's guests in the kitchen. Ah, here you are. Well, I'm mustering. Now, I've sat you between Angus and myself. Now, I know you don't want to talk shop over dinner, but Ronnie mentioned that you had researched Aboriginal medicines. Yes. Hmm. You're in the Northern Territory? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm utterly fascinated. Kurumpa Yulangu. Spirit is sad. <laughs> Never at one of our parties. No, well, not if I'm sat between you and Angus. I'll, I'll see you in there. Are we dealing with a neophyte? A neophyte. Only you, Clive, would say neophyte <laughs> in a normal conversation. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Up. Sorry, I didn't mean to give you a hard time. It's just, um. <laughs> so, are you going to black me all night or are we uh, pretending we don't know each other? Where have you been? Oh, yeah, I got caught snooping. I did try and call you. What happened? Blowout. Oh, still here now? Oh, yeah. And yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Alice seems nice and she's funny and gorgeous looking. Yeah, she's stunning. And this house is glorious. I mean, who'd have thought about us here? Hey, you're certainly having a great time. Well, it's nice that we're out for dinner together, isn't it? Is it? Would you just chill out and... You know, let's just go straight into dinner. I don't want to look any more out of place than I currently do. If that's all right with you. What is wrong with you? <laughs> this will be a feast for the eyes and the tummies. Come in, look at that. How about that? Isn't it beautiful? You find your name, love. There we are. I've put you next to Ali. <laughs> Thank you. Ali. Oh, George. You're over there. <laughs> Sit down, darling. Don't hold us up. We're all ravishing. That's all you, if I might say so. Now, <laughs> who's going to say great? <laughs> right, nice. I've got you. Mm. <laughs> Oh, you said it dropped a bit. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, quite well. Oh, 
did they do it? No one tells me. When did Bombay stop being Bombay? No, it's like, and all these um, new words that we pretend that we've always known, like, you know, tsunami. Who knew how to say tsunami? It's just... Have some more wine. You're such a lightweight. Have some more. Oh, I'm riding. Mm -hmm. My motorcycle. All oh, right. What, when Clive and Rowena are renowned for their guest bedrooms? They'd have had the sheets turned down, you know. Uh, I have my bike. Besides, I haven't brought my <clears throat> pyjamas with me. What? No fleecy pinstripe gym jams? Well, that's OK, because I would rather like to see you without them. Clive, <clears throat> could I have another glass of your wine? It's delicious. Ah, oh, yes, my magnificent Merlos. Yes, well, uh, we went to South Africa a couple of years ago, didn't we, darling? The Merlos Cab Saw of 2004 is superb. They only released it last July. Uh, oh, well, time to dust off the keys to the cellar. <laughs> and bring more than a couple of bottles. You do not teach the paths of the forest to an old gorilla. <laughs> and don't be long. All right. Old African proverb. <laughs> well, and then there were four. You remember the Miralas, George? Miralas is what Nick gave us for Christmas. Well, all he gave me was the wine. Tell me something. Have you and your husband always been monogamous? It's a bit of a personal question. <laughs> See, if it had been yes, you'd have said so. Well, things happen, don't they? People make mistakes. And yet you're here tonight. these two reprobates smoking behind the bike shed. No, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, just smoking. <laughs> Don't worry, Ronnie. I know who the bad influence is here. Honestly, can you believe it? Wacky Bucky. What sort of an example is that setting the staff? Uh, who do you think I bought the stuff off, Rowena? Oh, not the waitress with the swift. Come on, let's sit together. Come on, squeeze up. Go on, darling. <coughs> oh. Reserve on that. After all, we seem to have lost Councillor Overly and his secretary. <laughs> <laughs> More accurately, <laughs> Councillor Overly has lost his secretary, but has found Mrs Singer uh -huh. and has retired with her. <laughs> what do you mean that? As long as they don't swap toothbrushes, I don't care what they're doing. And here we have champagne and mixed fruit tort. Have you got a problem, George? Well, I just think maybe I'm, I'm not uh, sophisticated or cosmopolitan enough for this. Oh, well, it's got nothing to do with being sophisticated or cosmopolitan, I can tell you. It's about... <clears throat> yeah, it's about being honest, you know? Oh, Clive! <gasps> Let's play Truth or Dare! No, 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 no after pudding. Oh, come on! Truth or Dare! Knock, knock! Who's there? Pudding. Pudding who? Putting the lead back in me pencil! <laughs> oh, let's play Truth or Dare, Clive. Oh, Come all right. On. Truth or Dare? <laughs> da -da -da. <laughs> uh, Ronnie, I really think we ought to be going. It's quite a long way out for a cab. We're fine. No, no, no. Come on, George. Play the game. <laughs> all right, guests first. Uh, ladies first. Oh. Ali, Truth or Dare? Um, oh, let me think, um, truth. Okay, then. According to the rules of the table, in having elected to tell the truth, you must commit to supplying your true, full, and specific answer here. Of course. Always. Clive, drumroll, if you please. Ali, if I gave you... Ronnie, gift-wrapped as a present, 
What would you do with it? Mm. <clears throat> to keep. No, greedy. Just for a couple of hours. Yes, but he, he's <laughs> not yours to give, is he? Ronnie, I, I think... What's the matter with you? Just think of it as a, a cerebral exercise. Like that uh, cranial therapy stuff you used to do as Dr. West. Only less hands-on. Just, just relax. It's, um... It's just for fun. What would you do with me? Um, let me think. Well, I would, um, unwrap you. Slowly, because I like to savour my presence. And then when I can see exactly, um, what I'm getting. Sorry, can we stop this, please? Oh. What, am I supposed to just sit here while... It's a game. No. No, not to me it isn't. You're overreacting. Don't make a fool of yourself. Says the man in the slippers. Look, I can't be any more sorry, and I won't be any more punished. I used to think I'd do anything for your forgiveness, but I... <clears throat> I won't do this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ronnie? No, 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 cos you never do anything you don't want to do. Do you, George? What is this, mate? You've got some sort of twisted Greek tragedy thing going on here? I'm sorry if I've spoilt your evening, um, but you'll have to excuse me uh, if I don't partake any further. Um, wife swapping isn't really, um... My thing, despite what my husband may have led you to believe. Excuse me. Well, that was a showstopper. You didn't tell her. Oh, well, that is great. Yeah, that is really, really great. Neophyte. What did I tell you? Well, not first timer, darling. She didn't even know. This is so not good form. I'll have Henry get a car out for her. Hadn't you better stay where you are? Can I just ask, when were you going to tell her that you brought to a swingers party? What, when... Oh, when you took me to bed? <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be obligatory. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait! George? George? Come on, George, I want to talk to you. Yeah, I need to go home. No, it wasn't supposed to be like that. It was... It... An orgy? No! What, a bit casual swinging? I wasn't sure it was going to be that. Oh, you knew it? No! Is that what you thought we needed? Oh, come on, George, my head's been all over the place. You know that. Can you drive on, please? I don't care what they say. There is definitely something about a man in leathers. So, are you going home to make sure the wife's okay? You know, the evening needn't be a complete washout. We still have time. I'm leaving. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you go home. Ali, I... You know, you did such a good job of covering up how confused and feeble you are. You know what, Ronnie? I've changed my mind. Paying for his crimes. He doesn't carry the currency. Play me fire. Oh, blimey. Well, I've got myself burned a few times. Risky business, Ronnie. All this mind games and getting even, Lark. Of course, one can end up looking like a right swine. Clive. Oh, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Well, you don't need to explain to me. I'll smooth things over with herself. Maybe stick to lunch next time, eh? It'd be off her ladyship's guest list for the foreseeable. Oh, uh. Mannered. Oh, I needed a drink. You can tell me what that was all about. 
Fine. Well, don't expect me to keep offering olive branches when all you do is beat me with them. Well, that's very clever. Did you put that together yourself? It's how I feel. Oh, good for you. What a luxury. I'd love that. I'd love to know how I feel, rather than have brains like mush. Then focus on what you want and stop feeling sorry for yourself. Very easy for you, isn't it? No, it isn't. It's extremely difficult, but we can do this. I know we can do this. Geese and ganders, George. Maybe payback is puerile. Maybe I am simple. But that's what I wanted. Would you listen to yourself? This is you and me talking. We're not on bloody Oprah. Oh. All right, you tell me you don't understand why I wanted to see you punished. And you don't think I have been? You don't think that every day since I made this mistake that I haven't suffered? 21st. What? 21st. What is? You slept with Nick on the 21st of December, 2007. It's 126 days ago. All right. OK. This is nobody's fault but mine. God knows that. But so help me, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, I cannot take this anymore. I want! Oh, I want! If you want me, then you have to stop this and show me. Because I'm not staying where I'm not wanted. Did you really want to swap partners? No. I knew Clive and Rowena were a bit, um, oh, I don't know, free. The time was we would have had a laugh, wound them up a bit and then come home and... I miss laughing. Ali made you laugh. I felt dead, betrayed. It's hard work, misery. Do you feel better at it tonight? You looked like you were having such a good time. You didn't care about me, you were fine, flirting. I looked at you, you looked like none of this had touched you. Well. I put on a good show, didn't I? It was too much. And I felt... It was easy to punish you. I do care. Anyway, I thought he was gay. He had a fantastic manicure and... wanted to know if I knew John Barrowman. As if Rowena had winked at me one more time, I think I'd have poked her eye out. And you know better than anyone that seafood does not make me horny. It gives me wind. You didn't. I did. <laughs> the car hasn't got in. Uh, 
Well, you know what this means. What? We can never go back there again. Yeah. Hooray! <laughs> I promise you. It stops now. We'll start afresh. <coughs> Do we sleep? Get some. <laughs> How do I know that you haven't escorted half of Leatherbridge? Well, actually, most of them were from Birmingham. Everything okay? No, everything is not okay. Oh, you are just. Um... <gasps> oh, Archie! Julia, I'm so sorry. Ah! He's up there. No! A drive-by shooting is the first of a series of perplexing murders for Dr Sloan and Steve next in Diagnosis Murder. And this time on Monday sees the start of a brand new Australian drama, Out of the Blue, on BBC One Scotland. Stand by for a sneaky peek at what's to come.